Next, let's set up the RBD simulation to smash the wine glass. So we have our fractured geometry here, and what we want to do is go to the rigid body tab and set up something called RBD convex proxy. This uh, works with the bullet solver and specifically um, gives us geometry we need for, for these smashing. So if we go to smooth wired shade, you'll see that there's this sort of grid pattern um, behind the scenes of these different pieces that we have. And what we can do is say we also want a ground surface so that these things will smash on the ground surface. And that we can hide. We don't need to see that in here. Now both these elements we just created got put in a new network called the Auto Dop Network. Uh, there's the wine glass up there and that holds all the properties that we need to smash that. And those include physical properties such as density, which we can increase a little bit. Also does things like bounce and stiffness and rotational stiffness, so there's a fair bit. So if we just press play, uh, this thing just falls and hits the ground. We haven't set up any constraints or anything because the bullet's going to hit it so quickly um, that we don't need to worry about that. Now we don't have the bullet involved yet, uh, but what we can do is we can go, first let's go into the wine glass. You'll notice that a whole bunch of nodes have been added after the fracture out, and these do things like set up the decomposition, the convex decomposition. You can change the value on that to, to create a little more density. And then what we find out, press play, you'll get a feeling for that. So those are the broken up pieces that work really well with bullet, but notice some of them are connected together, so they work as a group. That's what this sort of decomposition is all about. Now, when we go, we can go and add the bullet in. And we're going to do that by going up to rigid bodies and just making this a normal rigid body object. Now that will add it to the auto dop network. If we double click, you'll see there's now a bullet uh, option in there. If we click on that, we want to give it an initial velocity so that it basically takes off at high speed towards the so we're going to go 400, and we're going to set its density really high so that it it hits the class. And shatters it. And then we can also, I forgot, with this object here, we don't particularly need to see um, all of these pieces. But what we do want to do is we want to, to see the base there. So the base is actually uh, primitive 171. So one of the things we can do is we can go into here and put an attribute create into our network here. And in doing so, we can say, um, do everything except 171, make them active and set their value to one, but the default is zero. So 171 will not be active. Um, all the pieces associate with net 171 and everything else will be. Uh, we can set the display on here, which will show us the nice, the prettier geometry. Um, Instead of, instead of seeing all the individual little bits. And we're going to set this to only go 1 to 50, uh, shorten the simulation time and also the animation time. Press play, and there we go. We're getting the smash. Now, it's not bad, but it feels like the bullet isn't quite having the impact it could. So one of the ways to do that is to actually break things into subframes. That's sort of already set up in subframes already, but we're going to increase that. We're going to add five subframes. So it takes longer to simulate because it's thinking about more frames, but you see how we get a little bit nicer look in terms of the way that the object is being smashed. So those sub steps um, are quite helpful. And there we go. So that gives us the smash that we're looking for. Uh, the next step would be to add in the fluids.